Uh, Alright. So we should be live now, guys. Hello, guys. This is What About Nintendo. And today I'm here for another episode of Coffee Talk. What is up, my dudes? Obviously, I brought the Nintendo news and I brought the coffee. We're we'll talking about Fortnite. We're we'll talking about a never before released or revealed uh, Nintendo system about VR. Uh, and all kinds of other topics as well. So hopefully you guys are hyped for this cop talk. Hopefully we can have pe people aren't at school and they can actually join the coffee talk. Hello, Game Clasher. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. How are you doing, my dude? No, I don't care about it. Etsy is trying to tell me about terracotta. All I care about is the Nintendo news. I don't care about no terracotta. Who cares about terracotta? Nobody cares about that. Yo, it's likely. How you doing? Oh, this is hot. Yeah, I guess let's just get... Oh, hold on. Is it alright if I put your stream in the background and playing some Osu? Why not, dude? Why not? Oh, no problem, Game Clasher, no problem. Glad to be of help. Anyways, let's jump right on into it. I'm not sure how long this coffee talk will be because there's not a huge amount of stuff. Well, the Fortnite stuff should take a bit. And the other, wow, well, yeah, the two big topics should take a bit. But the other topics, you know, we're just going to front line this with the small topics. And then we can get into the big topics. So let's start with, um... Let's start with this. Uh, just something really small, real quick. Let me move the camera so you guys can see. Uh, Nintendo has added a new special outfit to Super Mario Odyssey. Once you finish the main story, you can check out the shop to find the conductor wig and the conductor outfit. So, those are now in the game. You can go buy them. And, yeah, they, I mean, they look really weird. <laughs> wigs always look weird so it's like really weird seeing Mario in a wig as well it's like that it's like that fancy like English wig with the curls that like old American style wig I guess I guess it's English and then they brought it over to America I don't know how that works you think I know history of wigs no it's it's like the people you see in Parliament we're part of Parliament so we wear wigs <laughs> yo Koopa Troopa how you doing yeah, I mean, I guess it's cool. It's another thing to buy, but it's not the thing I would actually want to wear. So, it's just like, hmm, I don't know, man. Looks weird. Yeah. But, just a small thing. We're not going to dwell on that too long, because we have other bigger topics to talk about. So, boom. One topic down. Ten trillion topics out. Just kidding. It's actually not that many topics, but there's some big ones here. And next up is something that some first person shooter fans should be excited about and that is that Wolfenstein 2 the new Colossus gets a new update on Switch. There's a few issues here that I enjoy. Uh, first off there's general performance improvements which is always great. Obviously they were doing this with Doom when they would just put performance issues where they or performance improvements with the game will just run a little bit better maybe be a little bit sharper get a little bit more resolution in there. Probably nothing like mind-blowing it's not like oh I need to play the game again because it's mind blowing with better graphics here but it's like oh, nice uh, but something that i liked uh is that they added the snap to center option for motion controls and if you saw my review which who did um you would notice that in the review i complained that there was not a uh, a button a dedicated recentering button for the motion controls and they just added that took them a while but i mean better late than never they also fixed an issue with unresponsive controls within the game menu, and they fixed an issue affecting a star card achievement bug, none of which I ever had an issue with, though. Costumes are enough to make me want to play Odyssey again. Yeah. You know, it is enough to make me play Odyssey again. The fact that Odyssey is amazing, and I haven't 100%ed it, so I'm definitely going to play that sometime on stream. See, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting really bored of playing the same games over and just just playing multiplayer games over and over again i'm gonna start playing some more single player games on stream and i think you guys really enjoyed it yesterday when i played um i played zelda on stream and i we got we got like some of the 
you know, really high um, amount of people in there. Like, we had almost 200, 200 views on that stream, which is pretty, pretty good. So, like, I feel like people really enjoyed that one. People were liking, people were commenting, people were hanging out. We were in a great time. So I want to do more streams like that for a bit. Obviously, we're going to do multiplayer streams like Fortnite and stuff as well. But I want to do some more single player streams. Some Mario Odyssey, some, some Zelda, some stuff like that. Hey, Hulu. Did I say hey, Hulu? Did I say hi to you? I don't remember. But hi anyways if I didn't say hi to you. And if I did, you get two highs. Look at that. You know, 100% Odyssey either. You still have to beat the darker side. See, I only have like six... 600 five six hundred moons so I like I have a lot to do I haven't be darker side or I would be dark side or darker side so yeah some updates for Wolfenstein nothing too big just gonna move on to the next one um, another kind of disappointing thing is that yesterday uh, I said that Shinnin, the developers behind uh, fast racing new on the Wii U in fact RMX on the switch some of the best graphical showcase of the switch and in a lot of ways um beautiful 1080p 60 fps super fast uh shooter or not shooter uh racer um those, those developers they were gonna announce something today what they were working on for the nintendo switch and i was like oh what's gonna be it's gonna be dope uh, but it's not dope it's actually just they're working on art of art of balance coming october 4th on the eShop. if you know what art of balance is it's just a game where you balance blocks. That's all it is. I got a picture here. It's art of balance. It's a game where you balance blocks. That's all you do. That's all you do. I mean, it would be fun for like 5, 10 minutes maybe. I mean, the graphics are good. But other than that, I don't care. <laughs> so that was a big oof for me. I was like, oh, oof. How's the coffee? The coffee is delicious today, dudes. Just the right amount of sugar. Just the right amount of milk. It's perfect. Mm. Not too hot. Not too cold. In fact, I'm going to take another sip. It's just too good. Mm. That is the coffee I've come to know and love. So. But. Let's get into a bit of a well we'll save that one i feel like there's a bit of a talk about that one let's just start with dragalia lost here so dragalia lost um just released on phone so if you don't download that if you didn't pre-order it which i don't know why you wouldn't because you get like 1500 free money for downloading or for pre-ordering it but if you didn't pre-order it and you want to get that game go download it now the servers are up you can go play that game it's got four player co-op it's got really cool mechanics that, from what I've seen, I haven't played it yet, but uh, from what I've heard of other people who played it, it's really cool. So you should go check that out. And apparently Japan is really interested in this is because yesterday, before it even launched, it was already the number two on the App Store's most downloaded iPhone apps. Also, I don't think it's on Android quite yet, but I think it's coming. Uh, so yeah, it was number two. At that time, it was uh, number 23 in the U.S., Number three in Taiwan, number five in Hong Kong, and number five in Macau. Uh, also, I checked last night and it had raised to 17 in the US. I'm gonna check it again and see what it's at now. Oh, I didn't clock my water earlier. <laughs> Hold on, quick break to water my virtual plant here. It's a little sad, it's a little lonely, it's a little, it's a little thirsty. It's like I had to you know, water me a while. I just feel like I should water. I feel like I should. Give me a drink here real quick. Huh. Let's go. Hold on, just gotta water my virtual plant real quick. All right, here we go. Anyways, let's see. Okay, lost. There it is. Boom! Wow, it is a 4.7 rating right now out of 3,008 ratings. Look at that bad boy. Look at that thing being a beast. Like I knew the game looked good, but people are really liking this game. Yeah. Am I hyped for Animal Crossing? How could I not be? Who could? How could you not be hyped for Animal Crossing, my man? Now, I want to see more of Animal Crossing, but yeah, I'm hyped. Hey, Tiny House Gamer. Yeah, 4.7. Damn. Right now, it's number one role-playing, which makes sense. But what is it for all games? For all games. Earlier was 17. Let's see if it's gone down or up. Oh, it's gone down. All right, so it's at 19 right now 
for most downloaded apps. I think this is downloaded, um, not uh, not like uh, monetized, monetary, because it was at number 23 earlier and it, it wasn't making any money because it wasn't even up yet. What is an E3 or direct? Uh, E3 is the same general time every year in June, like the second week of June. Uh, and directs are whatever they feel like. There was just a direct last month, this month, this month. Uh, so I don't think we're gonna see another direct until like November, probably a Smash Direct. Bye, sir! <laughs> yeah, dude, it's got a great rating. So I'm, I'm actually pretty hyped to play Dragalia Lost. I'm gonna try to do like, uh, to get some of my YouTube friends together and try to record a video on that. If I can get the screen recording to be perfect on that. Now you're talking about Fortnite? No, 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 I haven't talked about Fortnite yet. Yeah, that's actually, uh, well, there's one more small topic to talk about before we get to Fortnite. So yeah, Dragalia Lost, you could download that now. Japan's really loving it. America has really loving it. 3,000 people, almost everyone has given it a five star rating. So it seems like it's a really good game. So you should definitely check it out if you like kind of RPGs and stuff like that. It's not turn based though, it's, it's real time top-down RPG and it uh, seems pretty dope but the last small little topic before we get into Fortnite and the uh, the secret Nintendo console we're gonna be talking about is that apparently uh, they all right. oh my my allergies hate me right now Mm, excuse me. Anyways, the um, they're taking pictures for the Game Awards 2018. Now, the Game Awards usually isn't something that's super, super big or super, super exciting. It's super, it's pretty big, but it's not super, super exciting. There's not a whole bunch there that keeps my interest. But every once in a while, Nintendo comes out and they show something. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's so awesome! Like they showed Breath of the Wild gameplay. They showed they revealed Bayonetta 3, all kinds of things like that. And Reggie was taking pictures for the Game Awards with Geoff Keighley. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And in the picture, he is caught wearing a Metroid shirt. So let me show you the tweet. Uh, so this is the tweet from Geoff Keighley about the pictures they took uh, for like Game Awards and different things. I'm not sure why they're taking Game Awards pictures right now. Who knows? But they took it. It's for the Game Awards, from what I've been told. I don't know. It's weird. But Game Awards is still in the summer, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So it's 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 odd. Yeah, I see you in December. So I'm gonna show you here. Right there, you can catch him underneath his suit jacket here. You can see he's wearing a t-shirt, a Metroid t-shirt. Whether or not this means anything is completely up to you guys. Uh, completely up to our discretion. Um, personally, I think it could mean something because Nintendo likes to tease things. But Met ne Reggie's been caught wearing Metroid pins and all kinds of stuff before, and it didn't mean anything. He just likes Metroid. So, personally, I'm just like, I don't know, man. I don't know if this means anything. But lately, Nintendo's like to be all, all secret, all, all, uh, they, they like to put a lot of teases and, and hints to their stuff lately in, in their Twitter and in, in their social medias. So it's like, hmm, I don't know, man, I don't know. You got a thunderstorm head your way? Dude, that sounds like fun. I wish there was a thunderstorm head my way. Actually, it probably is. It's been raining a lot. But it hasn't been thundering a lot. I want thunder and rain. I love rain and thunder. It's so fun. It's like the best. That's gotta be a tease. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But as I said, Reggie has been caught before, back when we were in the great Metroid drought, wearing Metroid pins, and it didn't mean anything. Uh, it, I mean, maybe it was hinting that they were in development, because at the time they were Metroids in development, but it was years before they actually announced anything. So, I don't know, I think he might just be hyped about Metroid, my dudes. I think he just likes Metroid. 
I don't know. It's possible that they could show a Metro teaser, and if they show a Metro teaser at the Game Awards, oh my gosh, I'd be so hyped. But will they show a Metroid teaser at the Game Awards? I'd say the likelihood of that is pretty low. Honestly, I think it's like five to ten percent. Don't get your hopes up. Don't get don't get too hyped. Don't be like, oh, Game Awards 2018, man. Cause you gotta keep my eye on that. Cause they're gonna show Metroid. Don't don't do that. Cause you're gonna most likely get disappointed. But and the off chance that this means something, and they're gonna show Metroid. Oh boy, it's gonna be awesome. And of course. Uh, I'll probably be live streaming my reactions to the Game Awards, even though I think last year I live streamed my reactions. And I was like, Oh, Nintendo! Oh, 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 oh Nintendo! Oh, okay. uh, that was the whole thing. It was just like, uh, Kill me now! So, it's like not interesting at all. And then you get Nintendo stuff, and you're like, Oh, yay, cool, okay, no, oh, dope. And then you go, uh, so, I don't know. Maybe if you guys want me to live stream it on my reactions, if we think they're going to show something, I'll do it. But, uh, oh, HUD, but it's not worth it. No, no, no. I think last year I didn't live stream it because it was going to be boring. I think I, I, did I record my reactions to Bayonetta or did I just talk about it? I don't remember. Something. I don't think I live streamed it. It would just be boring. So, who knows? Anyways, a little, little early to speculate on that right now, but... Who knows? Who knows? Could happen. Could be Metroid on the horizon for uh, the Game Awards, but also very easily could not be. But let's get stupid allergies. Let's get in to the Fortnite editions. We're gonna be looking over the version 6.0 patch notes, boys. Let me move my camera so you guys can look at them with me. Look at that. Season 6 of Rising Battle Royale brings new goodies with it. Uncover what's new in the Battle Pass. Explore an updated island with pets. And become one with the shadows of the new consumable. Join in the Karam Session mini event and save the world and learn more about a new enemy that has appeared from the storm. Why not? Let's watch this. No swimming. Can't swim. It's a bounce pad thing. Oh no! Giant floaty island. Ah! The cube, it came back. Look at that. So apparently, the cube didn't disappear in the lake. It's actually still, was, is actually still there. It just was underneath the lake. And we didn't know. I thought it was, I thought it became one with the lake, but no, it was just underneath the lake. And it rose. <laughs> Magneto, exactly. Yeah, Julio, don't get hyped. Stay, stay not hyped. Oh, there's another one. Well, it's fine. We don't actually have to listen to it. So you got the werewolf man. Got act werewolf hunter. Um, they change on the hills, it seems, a lot. So, obviously, as you can tell, this is a Halloween-themed update. Season 6 is all about Halloween. Costumes, werewolves, western things. It's like... Dark western, though. They got pets, for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> They just have pets now, that's a thing. And yeah. And then there are these um, shadow stones that you can grab. Yeah, these are consumables. And we'll be going over what they do in a bit. 
but they're in these corrupted areas so it's kind of as i predicted where all the different stamps are different now so all the areas where they're stamped they're now these corrupted zones i thought it would be a little different so i thought maybe like the stamps was where like the different areas would be but it's not the case it's just their corrupted areas now so they are different like i was saying but they're not exactly how i thought they were gonna be different hey andres what's up dude Maybe they track treasures? Treasures? Maybe. I don't know what they do. I don't think they do anything. I think they just are for fun. To be honest, I think they're just cool looking. Haunted Hills. Very changed. You got this, like, new super castle area. Where, um, the, you know, the special, um, like, disco dance party areas. This is about to save the world. Save more save the world stuff so yeah so then we're just gonna scroll down so this is where it tells us kind of like what the things are so those shadow stones are consumable typically found around the corrupted areas of the map as you know showed before these corrupted areas uh using a shadow stone will apply a shadow form for a brief period while in shadow form you're unable to use your weapons but you become invincible to enemies while not moving you become more visible and leave behind a shadow trail when moving. You gain increased movement speed, jump height, and you are immune to fall damage. You gain a new ability, Phase, which can be activated by pressing the primary fire button. Phase propels you in the direction you are facing, allows you to pass through objects. The effects last 45 seconds, but can be exited early by holding down the alternate fire button. Uh, the one that lets you, whichever one lets you aim down your sights on your uh, controls. Then there's the, uh, I think these are ones that are added to the, these are weapons that are added to the vault. They added um, impulse grenades, suppressed submachine guns, light machine gun, bouncer, and remote explosives to the vault. So you can't play them in anything other than playgrounds now in the normal mode. You will not find suppressed submachine guns, light machine guns, bouncers, or explosives, or impulse grenades, which is a little lame. I was, I kind of like the suppressed submachine guns actually, much more than the normal submachine guns, because I could get like, you could get accurate headshots and stuff and just wreck people. Light machine gun was it's unaccurate as hell and pretty crappy actually, so I'm not too upset about that. Bouncer, those are useful as well. Remote explosives, I never really use them, but I know you can kill people with them really easily, so it's like, you know, there's a few of these where I kind of was like, oh, they're taking them out, what the hell? But, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, they added some momentum fact functionality to the grapplers, but nobody cares. Da, da, da. All right, there were some other ones that are actually... Oh, they nerfed the double barrel, by the way. Da, da, da. Nobody cares about bug fixes. So, new location. So, there's the floating island. Obviously, that's the floating island above uh, Loot Lake. There's the corrupted areas. Uh, apparently, the cornfields. I don't know what those are. They didn't show a picture of those. Uh, and then the haunted castle, which is in... Um, you know, haunt. I think uh, Haunted Hills is now the, called Haunted Castle instead of Haunted Hills, probably. I like Tomato Temple. Tomato Temple very much... I feel like Tomato Temple should have been our clue as to what they were adding. Because Tomato Temple is kind of that like creepier, like Halloween-ish vibe. And I didn't, I didn't get it at all. For some reason, I didn't click with me that Halloween's about to come. They should do a Halloween update because I don't really care about Halloween. I know I'm a terrible person. But I just don't. I'm not a huge Halloween fan. Spyro? What about Spyro? Oh, the dragon. Yeah, they just look cute and react to different situations. That's what I think they do, yeah. That's all the pets are for. So, and then they tell you to drop it and find the rest in game. So, I'm not sure what other changes there are. Of course, I'll be live streaming the game later today with all you guys so we can figure that out for ourselves. Um. Da -da -da. Oh, uh, here's an interesting change. I'm just trying not to go for all the, like, small little bug fixes and, like, tiny little things like the safe zones and stuff. So, uh, players using keyboard, mouse, and PS4 will now be put into a PC matchmaking pool. So, uh, when you're playing on console, if you have the option for keyboard and mouse, if you use that, it will put you into the PC matchmaking instead of console matchmaking. Before, it just puts you in where the rest of the PC scrubs using crappy controllers. Uh, and you could wreck everyone, but now they're like, ah, oh, we ain't, we ain't letting you do that. 
Uh, we're now putting you in the PC with all the PC gods and master race people. So you can get destroyed, which is me every time I play the game. I just always gods everywhere. Um, even though I still get kills because I'm also a demigod. I'm like a Fortnite demigod, but on the PC, man, there are some straight up gods on there. It's just like, stop, stop try hurting my friends. Uh, so if you don't want to play with the, the tryhards on PC, don't use your keyboard and mouse on PS4. Uh, if you start matchmaking with a keyboard and mouse, you'll be queued in a match PC matchmaking pool. However, you'll be able to switch to a controller and match if you like. However, you cannot get around being put in the PC by first starting with a controller and then switching to a keyboard. That's not allowed. PC players are unaffected by this change if you use a controller and PC. You remain in the PC matchmaking queue. So unfortunately, we can't try to get in and wreck some PS4 scrubs because it's just not allowed. Um, I guess I'll go, I won't go over every single one, but in general, the safe zones seem to be, in, uh, changed to where the timing is still the same, but the wait time is reduced while the shrink time is increased, which I like because it, what that does is it lets you know that the storm is coming quicker and gives you more time to run to the circle. Cause a lot of times I'll be just mining away. I'll just be, you know, rummaging away through some random stuff, trying to find some loot. And all of a sudden, the circle will be like right there. And it's just coming. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, oh, crap. Didn't realize the circle was coming. Now I'm screwed. But this, you know the circle's coming quicker. And you can actually leave in time. So I think this is actually a bit better. But if you're on the edge of the circle, this could also be bad for you. Because it also means there's less time for you to rummage around like searching houses on the outskirts. So it's kind of like... In some specific instances, it's better. In some instances, it's worse. It's very interesting. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, you can now build food shopping carts, by the way. Which I... Oh my gosh, there's been some times I'm like, Build! No! Let's shop cart! Oh, I'm dead. So, that's nice. <laughs> da -da -da. Oh, this one's nice for all you Switch people. Uh, another big optimization has come to the switch so optimized texture binding rendering code on the switch this improved cpu and gpu performance resulting in smoother gameplay and higher resolution rendering for all you people on the switch you just get an, an even more optimized experience from what i've seen the switch version looks like infinitely better than it did at launch so there's going to be higher frame rates here higher resolutions which is nice It's optimized performance when players are in screen and stuff like that. So, so they pretty much optimized the the game not only for PC but for especially for the Switch. So you're gonna see higher resolution, higher frame rate, better performance when there's a ton of people on screen, things like that. Oh, this is nice. They optimized the movement for supply drops. So if you played the game before, you may have noticed a lot of times when you're shooting a, when your a supply drop is falling, it goes like. Uh, Oh, uh, oh, uh, it's just like, do, do, do. It's just like super, like, 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 just like flying all over the place and really, really annoying. Uh, they fixed that apparently. This optimized, so it should be better there. And then there's some performance things for um, memory, which should be nice because the Switch only has 4 gigabytes of RAM and things like that. So there's not only for phones, but PCs and. It improves everything, but I, a lot of it's optimized specifically for the Switch and things where it's optimized in a lot of ways that the Switch will benefit just because it's um it, it's it's in there the Switch's weak points, but there are also uh, some specific ones that are only Switch improvements that they 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 did, which is really nice. Da -da 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 -da. Other than that, there's not really that much different. Um, there's some, there's an interesting thing where um, their storm uh, gets like more intense as the storm closes in. Like if you're actually in the storm, it's not the same rain and lighting effects um, when it's like the first storm versus the last storm, which I guess is interesting. Uh, but other than that, it's like, like there's not really much else here. Honestly, I think season six is way more exciting or season five is way was way more exciting than season six. I look at season six, and I'm like, oh, okay, there's some interesting stuff. 
but it's not nearly as cool as season five. Like season five is like, holy crap, there's this and this and this and this and all this stuff. And it was like, oh my gosh, look at all this cool. Like there's a like paradise and the Viking and all this stuff. And it was just like, oh my gosh, there's lazy links. And, and now it's just like, oh, there's, you know, the island. Uh, okay, it's in Loot Lake. Who cares about Loot Lake? Um, and then there's Haunted Hills gets an upgrade. Okay, cool. That's pretty much it. And then there's these like, corrupted spots. Like, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, yay. So for me, it's like, ah, whatever. Does the Switch run at a higher frame rate? It looks smoother. It should uh, run at a higher frame rate, yeah. Because it, as I said, they did all the, the CPU and GPU improvements. So, yeah, it should run at a higher frame rate now. It's still locked at 30, but you're going to get 30 a lot more often. Oh, dude. Hello there. They should give you an item that when you drink it, it makes you run faster. Well, this makes you run. Let me. I think it makes you run faster, doesn't it? Da -da -da -da. Yeah, so you run faster, you can jump higher, and you're immune to damage. It's pretty much like a better form of that, like, crystal stuff that was in Season 4. It's like a better version of that. More, more, except you can't use weapons while you're using it. So in some ways it's better, in some ways it's worse. Your movement's a lot better, but your uh, offense is not existent. <laughs> yeah. So if you hold down the, uh, or if you, you can phase through walls because you can click on the, on the, uh, if you click the shoot button, it, it launches you forward and you phase through stuff. They look like this, but they're not that big. They're like tiny. They, they look more like this. This is just really close up on one. But yeah, that's pretty much it for season six though. Like in season five, I was just like running down the list. Oh, also ATKs were added in season five. Like season five was so much more interesting. Like this has some cool stuff. Don't get me wrong. Like this is a pretty cool thing. But like I was expecting the levels of season six. Or season five, excuse me, like for season six. Like, I don't care about the pets. I'm not a huge, fan. maybe it's because I'm not a huge fan of uh, Halloween. What do you guys, what do you guys think? Are, are you guys big fans of season six? Maybe it's just because I'm not a huge fan of, of Halloween. It's just maybe that's why it is. Like, I like Halloween, but I'm not like, oh my gosh, Halloween's the best. I'm just like, oh, Halloween exists. <laughs> Actually enjoying the season more than the last one. This one's very spooky. Okay, okay. Fair enough. So it seems like it, it's it's really for those those spooky things. You're a fan of everything dark, gothic, and spooky. Gotcha. Gotcha. See, I'm a fan of everything bright, colorful, uh, bright like shiny and colorful. Not a huge fan of dark and spooky. Although twilight is such a beautiful time, like when you get into that like twilight lighting. It's so, it's so good. Like when you're in your house and, and there's no lights on, but the moonlight's like drifting in. It's like really pretty. I like that. Like this kind of like twilight, like the moon is shining. And it's illuminating. Like that's a really nice lighting. I like it. So. I wonder if it's, is it always night though? I wonder. You know, a big fan of the Halloween theme either? Yeah. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just not a huge fan of Halloween. Paradise was so much cooler for me than the Halloween stuff is. And I feel like there was just bigger changes. Like, Paradise is such a huge place. But then again, there, is some, there might be some changes that they didn't talk about. As I said, they're like, oh, you should drop in and see what there is. Because there was a lot of areas in the uh, Season 5 where they didn't, they didn't show those off in the patch notes. They were like, oh, just drop in and figure out what it's up. So, I'll have to see. Yeah, I'm going to be playing this, um, I'm going to be live streaming this for all of you guys, playing with all you guys, um, after I put out my video. So after I end this cop talk, I'm going to edit a video, upload that, and about an, probably 30 minutes to an hour after that video uploads, it shouldn't take that long to edit, it's not a super complicated game, it's just me playing NES games, so it's just going to be a few, few edits here and there to make it more, you know, fun and stuff, and then I'll, I'm just going to upload it, so I think it'll probably take like an hour, hour and a half. Um, 
So yeah, I think I'm gonna start streaming probably at like three, four a.m. Uh, four, three to four p.m. It's not always nighttime. Oh, that would've been dope. It was just always night. That would've been interesting. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Anyways, I think that's pretty much all there is to talk about Fortnite season six until we actually play it ourselves. So, let me move the camera back, and we're gonna talk about the last topic of the day, and that is that secret Nintendo console, that secret VR console that was never ever uh, announced, never never shown off. We have, have any pictures of it. We never got any information of it at all. We never knew it existed, period. That was actually going to release. In fact, it was actually going to be released at the same time as the Virtual Boy. In fact, it was going to be released instead of the Virtual Boy. And it was essentially a much, much better Virtual Boy. So if somehow, some way, you don't know what the Virtual Boy is, in 1995, Nintendo was trying to make some sort of VR like headset for the general p gaming market um, that you know would play some cool some cool VR ish games and kind of get you a VR like experience in home and they came up with uh, the virtual boy which what which only ever had 14 games nobody really liked it and it only displayed in red and black however we thought that this was because the technology wasn't there. We thought maybe, you know, technology didn't exist for full color or better graphics or anything like that or head tracking or anything like that that we have in the modern VR consoles. We just thought maybe they, you know, the technology didn't exist for that. But it did. Apparently technology did exist for the, all those things and Nintendo had already made a prototype for it. So let me, let me read you this article here. So this is uh, a British tech pioneer has spoken out to reveal new details of a lost Nintendo console, which was designed in the UK and scrapped in favor of the failed Virtual Boy system. So Jeremy Jez San, San I think, 52, uh, he was the one who won a global fame award after a company he founded in his North London bedroom team up with Nintendo to design the legendary game Star Fox. So, his uh, firm, Argonaut, was the one responsible for building the famous Super FX chip, which was fitted inside game cartridges including Star Fox and powered the first 3D graphics. So, he and his team made Star Fox and the Super FX chip, and they were also working on this VR headset. After all this, he went to work on the design of a mysterious virtual reality gaming system called the Supervisor which was cruelly canceled in favor of an ill-fated machine called the Virtual Boy. Those are not my words, that's the words of the article. Um, this console was a commercial flop, and the development of VR gaming stalled for more than 20 years until the Facebook-owned American company Oculus VR released a headset called the Rift. Alright, bye Julio. Thanks for dropping by, dude. Son was later awarded the first ever OBE award for services to the gaming industry. Nintendo's decision also robbed Britain of its place in the history of virtual reality gaming. Wow, that this is this article is savage. <laughs> it's just that robbed the the place in the history of virtual reality gaming. Damn. So this is what he said. He said, "Quote: I worked on a VR machine called the Supervisor for Nintendo, but unfortunately, we fell out. A guy called Mr. Gunpai Yokai." or Yo Yoko, Yokoi, canceled our project in favor of the Virtual Boy, which we used to call the Virtual Dog because it was so bad. He made a bet in the wrong direction, canceled our project, and his one was awful. The Virtual Boy released in 1995 and was the first system to offer 3D VR graphics. But it was not a head-mounted helmet like most subsequent VR sets, meaning customers had to use it while sitting at a table. It also offered disappointing red monochrome graphics and was very expensive. Nintendo made just 22 games with the system before withdrawing it from sale in 1995. I think only 14 of those actually came out in America. Just Son told Metro Firm's VR system was much more powerful, offering full color graphics and head tracking, which meant it could respond to the movements of its, yeah, uh, uh, no shit article. This technology could have been used to let gamers look around virtual worlds and interact with stimula er, simulated environments. 
It was a bad decision, says Sun. We had full color and head tracking at a time where no one else did, but the supervisor was canceled in favor of a system with no head, tra head tracking and red graphics. It was like the Vive set headset that's on today, but made 20 years earlier. Of course, it wasn't quite as good as the Vive because the better screens now, but ours was made a long time ago. We almost finished the supervisor and it was canceled to do the virtual reality or the virtual boy, which was a shame. VR gaming could have happened 20 years ago if they had kept us on. Apparently, the technology was later offered to toy manufacturer Hasbro for a console called the Toaster, which also failed to see the light of day. In the early 1990s, uh, it was something of golden age for gaming, starting with at least the NES. Blah 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 blah. This does not have anything to do with the actual article. Oh, it, it kind of does. So it was an era of moral panic about violence in computer games as well as their possible health risk. Tenderman's arch rival Sega both placed warnings in their games which admitted they could cause epileptic fits in a very small number of gamers, while Nintendo successfully defended itself against legal action brought by a woman who claimed the games triggered her seizures. Solon says the climate of fear contributed to the death of the supervisor. To use VR, you have to wear some dorky thing. You look like a fool wearing it. Also, it's unsafe because your eyes are covered and you can't see what's happening in the real world. So you might slice your hand at knife or fall down some stairs. You were home early, my friend. <laughs> I went to go work on a car, and then I ended up having the wrong part, so I had to order the right part. And so I'm going to get here until like 1.45, so now I'm going to lunch tomorrow with Dad, and then I'm going back to work. And I'm coming back later to hopefully do what I came here originally. Dope. Dope. Yeah. Anyways, it's unsafe because you can't see what's happening in the world world, so you might slice your head a knife or fall down some stairs. How would that ever happen? <laughs> Nintendo and Hasbro both sh shied away from doing VR systems because of product liability laws, which meant they could get sued for gazillions if someone hurt themselves while wearing it. They were very consumer friendly companies that didn't want to be sued for anything, so we had to wait 20 years for Facebook to have the guts to buy Oculus and say perhaps the. Uh, perhaps thought na uh, naively that it could do VR without getting sued. So, yeah, apparently, 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, about 23 years ago, I believe. There was VR, which is absolutely insane. There was going to be a good ver like a good version of the virtual boy. Of course, we don't know how much better. It, they said it had three. They said it had you know good 3D graphics, and they said it had you know um, color and stuff like that. But we haven't actually seen any games of it. We haven't seen what it looks like. We see they said it has head tracking, but how good is that head tracking actually? What are the resolution of the screens? We don't know any of these kind of specific details. But we do know that these are the developers that made the Super FX chip. They have a pedigree of making stuff that is just mind blowing. Like back in the day, the Super FX chip was extremely advanced. Like it was, it was crazy what it could do. Um, you know, actually allowing the SNES to render, you know, polygons in games and stuff. It was, it was pretty revolutionary at the time. So we do know that this company knows how to make some really cool tech stuff. You know, stuff that's not really possible outside of their kind of, you know, uh, at least in consoles, stuff that's not possible, wasn't possible at the time, uh, at least for a good price. So we know that they're good at making things work, you know, really well, even if it's, you know, kind of, they're, they're kind of like the Nintendo of, of gaming. They know, they knew how to make things that are, you know, lower, low power, low, low uh, performance, you know, kind of strength. Actually, the words are not coming to me right now. Run really well. So they have this kind of pedigree where they could make this work. And it probably was much more powerful than the Virtual Boy. And I wonder if they had released it, if the VR would have been a success or not. It's really hard to say. Because as they said, there were some issues. Probably would have been more expensive. There were some issues about Nintendo not wanting to get sued. Things like that. So who knows what could have happened. If this had come out, but I just thought like it was crazy that there's this whole Nintendo machine, and again, we didn't know about it. There's probably tons of crazy Nintendo consoles that we don't know about and we may never know about. But also, eventually, somebody like this this guy Jeremy Son might tell us what you know they're making, what they've been working on. 
I always, I am one of those guys, like, I really want to see the Nintendo R&D vault because I know there's some crazy, crazy stuff in the Nintendo R&D vault. There has to be some absolutely bonkers, absolutely insane stuff going on in there. Like, I want to, I want to see all those different ideas they come up with. Because Nintendo comes up with some crazy ideas for things and some crazy tech. And, I mean... I, I want to see what they've been working on. Like, something like this. Some virtual reality with head tracking. Full color. Like, all this kind of stuff they're talking about. They're talking, it's like the Vive, but worse graphics. It's what they're talking about. Like, that's, that kind of virtual reality. Just, you know, with, you know, graphics of, you know, kind of back of the day quality graphics. So, it's just like, I I mean, was is he talking like maybe he could run SNES quality, maybe like 32 bit, 16 bit, like who, like are they talking like SNES? Or are they talking in between SNES and 64? Are they talking NC4 graphics? What kind of the graphics were on this thing? It's like we don't know. So there's just too many unknowns, man. Hopefully one day they are stupid commercial. Let me skip it. Let me skip it. There we go. Maybe one day we'll figure it out. Maybe one day he'll, this guy will come out with pictures or maybe even a demo. Maybe somebody will even find like that PlayStation um, crossover with Nintendo console. They found that and people are able to actually play it. Like maybe one day people will find a prototype of this and people will actually be able to play it and experience it and like see what it was going to be like. It's very, very interesting. Abadiba. Abba, uh, ab, abba, beat, maybe, beat, uh, I don't know what you're talking, what? I didn't say anything like that. What are you talking about? Anyways, I want to see more of this. It's super cool that this kind of stuff is found. I always like seeing the history of different products. Of course, as I said, I want to get in on that Nintendo R&D vault. I think it'd be super awesome to see what they have hiding back there and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, guys, that's that's uh, that's gonna be all for this live stream. Thank you guys all for watching. Stay tuned because I'm gonna be coming up with my NES, um, another NES gameplay video where I play um, oh, what was it? I'll I'll let you guys know later. I don't remember the name. I remember I know I played Dark Mario. I played uh, Excite Bike, but it was like Streets. No, it wasn't Streets of Age. It was um. Double Dragon. So I played Double Dragon, um, Dr. Mario, and uh, Excite Bike. So watch, keep an eye on that. I said watch the live stream on this part. I said that. I don't know what you're saying. I'm confused. You're confusing me. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyways, stay tuned. Because I'm going to be coming out with a video on that. And then also stay tuned because in live streaming Fortnite, probably 3, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. So stay tuned for that. Fortnite Season 6, we're going to get in. We're going to see what's up with that. We're going to see if it's any good because I'm a little wary. Season 5, I was like, super hyped as soon as I saw everything. But Season 6, I'm just kind of like, it looks like it might be okay. But I'm not really sure. Anyways, guys, thank you all for watching. And I'll see all you dudes later on What About Nintendo. Bye.